Let's go over the five top tips for buying a new car in 2020. So you're looking to buy a new car in 2019, 2020? Well, I've actually bought a ton of different cars. I think I've had about 20 different cars, so I know a little bit about this topic. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes too, buying them and things like that over the years. So just want to kind of go over some of the best tips you can do when you're thinking about buying a car. And I'm just going to go through five of them really quickly here and uh, let me know your thoughts. Post them in the comments and always, like I said, subscribe and please help me out if you can. Hit the like button. Anyways, let's get into the five top tips for buying a new car in 2020. All right, so the first one basically, when you go in to buy a car, um, what they're going to try to do is they're going to get, you know, try to negotiate a price and everything at once. So basically, they're going to try to kind of confuse you. Um, what you want to do is before you actually go into the dealership, go ahead and get yourself a loan or get pre-approved for a loan. This way you can actually shop out interest rates. You know, you can shop for the best interest rate at a bank. You can um, determine how much you want to spend. Let's say it's twenty dollars to $30,000. You can get the loan. You know what your percentage is as far as your interest rate. You know how much you're going to be paying over how many years. And you're not kind of basically bombarded when you walk into the dealership and they're basically throwing everything at you and you got this car that you really want to buy and things like that. So definitely do that in advance. Now, granted, some car dealerships, when I say that, you have to take it with a grain of salt because some car dealerships have specials. And if the special is like 1.9 or 0% interest over five years or something, um, you have to consider that because you may not be able to get that at the bank. So you have to weigh those options. But you want to go in knowing what that is and actually know what your approach is. So obviously, sometimes when you see those 1.9% interest rates or 0% interest rates, it's going to say either that or a cash. Uh, you can either get cash off the car. So you have to, again, weigh the difference in how long you're going to finance and how much cash they're going to give you and figure out which is better because because obviously if you finance a really long time, like seven years, um, you know, the cash may not be as good as the lower rate in financing. Anyways, my point is, and number one, is just try to get pre-approved for your, for your loan and don't rely on the, uh, the people that are trying to basically get as much money from you as they can at the dealership. Um, do it at the bank and, and shop around and make sure you get that when you're going in, but don't tell the dealer yet. All right, number two. So this is actually kind of almost like number one, but it's a little bit different. What you want to do is you don't want to do too many things at once when you walk into the dealership. So basically, you want to negotiate the price of the car first. Don't, um, you know, don't let your cards go. Don't basically tell them that you have a car that you're going to trade in later. Don't tell them that you're going to finance with them, him or her. You know, do, do it. You know, basically, just tell them I'm working on the car price. What do you? What can you sell me this car for? Get the car price first. Do one thing at a time and win each step of that of that battle. When you actually tell the person everything you're going to be doing in the beginning, they'll go ahead and give you a really good car price and give you terrible financing, or they'll they'll basically do do a whole bunch of things to make kind of you know to make it look good. Um, but if you can get a good car price to begin with, you know, with nothing else, uh, mudding the water, then basically after that, you know, anything you do will be kind of gravy. So, you know, at least what you're dealing with on the car price for, you know, for example, um, you know, you can basically say, oh, I have a trade or something like that. Uh, instantly what they'll do is they'll give you less money in the trade most likely and get the car price down if you kind of negotiate a car price. So obviously get the car price you want and then you can disclose the trade later. So that's important. And then the trade, you basically take that as a step two and then negotiate your trade until you're happy. And you may have to shop different dealerships to make sure they give you enough money on your trade. Um, get the price of your car first uh, that you want to buy, then get the trade amount second, completely independent. You know, bring that into the equation after you got the price, bring the uh, trade in, and then even financing third. I mean, then maybe say, oh, by the way, I got my own bank I'm going to finance through. Or you can say, you know, the third thing I want to do now is negotiate the financing and basically then negotiate a really low term for yourself if you can. Don't muddy the water with all three of them because they're going to basically try to do stuff to you. Based, you know, not a, Let's put it this way. A lot of people are honest that are working out there, but obviously they're in it to make money. So and you're in it to save money. So basically just do all this in advance and do one thing at a time. Make sure you know where you stand. And that's my best advice for that. All right, number three. So you've always heard this. You're sitting in the car dealership and you're about to sign a dotted line. The finance manager comes in and then they start throwing these like extended warranties at you and all this other stuff. Oh, if you buy them now, they'll be cheaper and things like that. My advice, I mean, it could be different scenarios out there. So, I mean, post them in the comments. I mean, obviously people may disagree in some cases, but my advice is do not buy them. Um, don't buy any aftermarket stuff, um, you know, in including, you know, things for your roof and all that stuff, which I'll get into. But more or less, I'm talking about like the, the uh, you know, extended warranties and things like that, because generally a new car is going to come with three to five years, sometimes 
10 years in like Hyundai's case. Um, but basically you're gonna get a big stretch of time to begin with. So why are you buying, if you buy something that's two or $3,000 at the very beginning when you're buying the car, it may extend that out if you think you're gonna keep it, right? But at the end of the day, you're gonna be paying finance, you know, your finance charge and interest and all that stuff, you're gonna be paying for that for the full length of however long your payments are for, five, six, seven years. So I would wait until the car gets out of warranty or get, you know, I wouldn't wait until it gets out, but I wait until it gets close. It could be three or five years. And then at that time, basically go ahead and buy it. Cause you can buy these after that's one misconception. You can always buy these after it may not be directly through the dealership, but sometimes it is sometimes it's through a third party, but you can buy the extended warranty later. It's better to buy it when you need it. Things can change in life and you know, may not, you know, you don't want to buy a 3000 thing that you're going to just get rid of. If you never, you know, if you never keep the car long enough, you'll never use. So my advice is just do that. You know, what I'm saying is just buy it later. Don't buy it in the beginning. Don't finance that amount when you're not going to be using it for three to five years anyway. Aftermarket stuff like rims and all that other stuff too, you can usually find cheaper uh, through various avenues or you know, sometimes you can find them on even eBay and then have them installed professionally. Um, things like that I would wait as well. And some, maybe the one caveat is something like a remote start where you know, it might void the warranty if you're actually going to be installing something. You got to obviously ask those questions. Um, you know, you don't want to void your warranties. So if it's a remote start or something that has to be you know, installed right then and there, then that might be something you go through the dealership with right away. Um, but I'll leave that one up to you. All right, so this is another one. Now, I recommend a five-year you know, five loan. So basically what dealerships are trying to do, and if you look at some curves and things as far as graphs, they're gonna be showing you that the six and seven-year uh, financing is going way, way higher now recently. And a lot of people are doing six to seven-year financing because the car they wanna get a car that they can't afford. Um, you really wanna go with about a five-year at max as far as your financing. Don't go six or seven years if you can help it. Try to you know, pick a car that you can afford under five years. And the reason for it is a couple things. Obviously, when you go six and seven uh, and the interest rate's a little bit higher, that could be, you you know, you'd be paying thousand dollars more in interest, and that's actually not a good thing. Obviously, to giving giving money away for nothing, you're not, it's not going into your cars; it's going into the interest. But the other thing that's basically going to be the not so much obvious is being upside down on your car. So if you have a five year loan and you only keep it one or two or even three years, you might break even on the car. If you have a seven year loan and you have to get rid of the car for an emergency or something comes up in life where you have to get rid of it, you could be you know five ten thousand dollars upside down on the car. And uh, all of a sudden, if you need to get a cheaper car, there's no you have no option basically because you're gonna have to finance another ten thousand just to get rid of the car. Um, so you have to think long term. I mean, obviously everyone thinks, oh, my payment's low right now, but things can happen in the future. So my advice is, you know, even four years or five years, pick a car that you can afford in that range, um, and that's important. And then basically do the financing that way because that's ultimately you know where you want to be, and you don't want to be upside down, you know, so much when you right when you buy the car that it's gonna take you you know five six years to even break even on the car. Car. All right, my last tip is probably my best because I bought a lot of cars, so I know this. So, so when you're buying a car, I mean, obviously, when you when you drive it off the lot, you may lose 20% of the value of the car, 15%. So, you want to try to avoid that. What I look for is, that, let's say it's 2019, 2020. Let's say it's 2020, just for example. Buy a 2020 car, but buy something that the dealerships maybe has a car that's on a lot that they've used slightly, but it's maybe got anywhere from three to 5,000 miles on it. And the reason I always buy those cars is number one, it's basically going to be almost new. I mean, almost like new. Um, obviously, it's going to go through an a point, in a, a, you know, 60 point inspection and all that stuff and be certified. Um, you also save the cost on the initial depreciation of the car. So let's say you're losing that 20% on a new car. That 20% is usually going to be, you know, when you buy that car with three to 5,000 miles, it might be 15% to 20% cheaper just to begin with because you've already just removed all that cost. So right away when you buy the car, you're not losing that big chunk of money. And, uh, you know, it's a little, you know, obviously it's nice to have the new car smell, but a lot of these cars do and uh, they only have a couple thousand miles on them. So, so if you want to save that 15, 20%, it's, it totally makes sense. And then the big thing that I always do, and a lot of people don't even realize this, is a lot of times they certify those cars right off the bat. And what a certification does is it gives you the, the rest of the primary, uh, you know, the warranty on the car, but then they also give you an extended warranty above that. So sometimes it's an additional year or two years af after the first warranty's expired. So if you buy the car within the first six months, it's like getting a year to a year and a half of free warranty included for nothing, plus the car's cheaper. 
So because you're getting that extended warranty because it's a certified car and it's only six months old, all of a sudden you're getting, instead of three years, maybe four and a half, instead of five, maybe six and a half. So you really wanna look at these cars. These cars make a ton of sense to buy and I highly recommend them. And you, I've had no problems with them at all, obviously, because they don't wanna sell, you know, Obviously, something some things can happen in a car that's that age. Um, if it's beat to you know what, but in most cases they're they're just about new. All right, so I hope that helps everybody, and this just my five tips basically that I can try to help people with on buying a car since I bought so many of them. Um, I've had a lot of mistakes too, and I've spent a lot of money on stuff I shouldn't have. So um, go ahead and post your comments. Let me know if some other tips and things like that. I can post another video. I make video on uh, technology products, Apple PC stuff like that, a bunch of financial videos, including cars and everything else. So. If you guys can help me out, hit the subscribe button and the like button. It's really going to help me out. And we will talk soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.